In this section, we will discuss the effect of a gas density change on dynamic compressor performance. The factors that define a given fluid will be presented. And you can readily observe that there are a large number of factors necessary to define a vapor since it is a compressible fluid. Now, referring again to the fluid head equations for a liquid and a vapor, you can see that the pressure ratio developed for a gas is dependent on temperature, molecular weight, the specific heat ratio, and compressibility. By solving the head equation for pressure ratio, it can readily be seen that if the inlet gas temperature is held constant, the pressure ratio will increase with increasing molecular weight and will decrease with decreasing molecular weight. Conversely, if the molecular weight is held constant, the pressure ratio will increase with decreasing gas inlet temperature and will decrease with increasing gas inlet temperature. The effect of a gas composition change on head is assumed to be such that once an impeller is designed, it will remain constant. This is not entirely true for an impeller working on a vapor for the following reasons. First, head is generated by impeller tip speed and exit gas velocity relative to the blade, as seen in the previous section. Gas composition and inlet gas temperature changes affect the compression ratio. Volume flow rate varies with pressure, temperature and compressibility. And finally, since the impeller exit area is fixed, a change in volume at the exit will produce a change in absolute gas velocity and gas tangential velocity. Therefore, head does change slightly. Notice, however, that for molecular weight changes on the order of 20% and less, it is common to assume that head is constant for a given flow and speed. The compressor impeller produced head changes slightly and also the curve shape will change as a result of the changing velocity relative to the blade. A summary table will be presented which shows the change of head and the limits of the compressor curve for condition changes of molecular weight and temperature. Also shown is the change of velocity relative to the blade at the exit. You will see that an increase in molecular weight will result in increasing head and a smaller flow range, while a decrease in molecular weight will decrease head and produce a greater flow range. On the other hand, increasing temperature will decrease head and increase the flow range, and decreasing temperature will increase head and reduce the flow range. This fact will be explained in details when we will observe the discharge velocity triangle of any compressor stage. Now, to give you an idea of the overall picture, what I wanted to understand and to remember for now is that increasing fluid density will result in higher compression through the impeller or blade row. This will result in a reduced exit volume for a given volume of inlet flow. A reduced exit volume flow acting on the same vein area will result in a reduced velocity relative to the blade. Recall that a reduced velocity relative to the blade will produce a higher tangential velocity and of course a correspondingly higher produced head. This same logic can be presented for a reduction of molecular weight and for a reduction of temperature. Note here that the effect of molecular weight does have a slight effect on system resistance and this will be covered in this section as well. Also, gas composition will produce a change of the actual volume flow rate since different compression ratios will be produced and as a result, an effect on power will be experienced since both head, mass flow 
and efficiency will change. Finally, a detailed multi-stage compressor example will be provided to you to summarize the effect of molecular weight change on multi-stage compressors. The parameters necessary to define a given fluid are presented in this figure. Note here that only two parameters are necessary to define a fluid in the liquid state, since it is incompressible. On the other hand, almost three times that number are required to define that fluid in its vapor state, since the vapor is compressible. The following figure shows the relationship used to determine the head required to increase the pressure of a fluid in its liquid state and here in its vapor state. Note how much the density of the fluid influences the amount of energy required to meet a certain process requirement. When you consider that the additional amount of head produced as the flow rate of the centrifugal compressor decreases from rated point to surge point is on the order of only 10%, you can see here and understand that a small change in the gas density can result in a significant flow reduction and possibly a compressor surge. The pressure ratio produced by a dynamic compressor is heavily affected by gas density. Here you can see the relationship used to determine the head required to increase the pressure of a gas. You can see from this equation that for a given compressor flow and speed, the head produced by a dynamic compressor is essentially constant. Now rearranging this equation gives the following formula for the pressure ratio. It becomes clear now that since the head is fixed for a given compressor flow and shaft speed, then any change in the molecular weight, the gas inlet temperature, the specific heat ratio or compressibility will change the pressure ratio produced. This information is presented in tabular form for changes in molecular weight and inlet gas temperature. It is commonly thought that dynamic compressor head produced is always constant for a given flow rate and speed. The following figure presents this fact for the same compressor operating on different gases. Oxygen with a molecular weight of 32 and nitrogen with a molecular weight of 28. This statement is however not true for a fluid in the vapor state since head in a dynamic compressor is produced by blade velocity and gas velocity. Gas velocity will change with gas density since a gas is compressible. So, the assumption that compressor head remains constant for a given flow with gas composition and temperature changes is not totally true. Recall that head is generated by impeller tip speed and exit velocity relative to the blade. So, gas composition and temperature changes will affect the compression ratio. The volume flow rate will change with pressure, temperature and compressibility. And that, since the impeller exit area is fixed, a change in exit volume rate will produce a change in velocity. To better illustrate this concept, let's refer back to this figure, which shows the relationship between gas relative velocity, blade tip speed, and tangential gas velocity in a centrifugal compressor. Recall, we have seen this in a previous video. So, if you feel like you're a little bit rusty on this concept, then please go back to the corresponding video and watch it again.
it is extremely important that you understand perfectly how these velocity vectors are used, summed, projected and interpreted to illustrate many of the centrifugal compressor head concepts. Now, since the head produced by any dynamic impeller is proportional to the blade tip speed and gas tangential velocity, then reduced gas velocity through the impeller will increase the head produced as depicted in this figure. This is the result of increased gas tangential velocity for a given impeller diameter and speed. So, as seen in this example, gas velocity will vary with gas density, and consequently, the head will also vary with gas density. The following table presents the effect of gas density changes on impeller produced head, surge point, and choke point. And here it can be seen from this graph that curve shape is influenced by gas density changes. Therefore, keep in mind that a low density gas will always have a greater flow range than a high density gas. This is a typical centrifugal compressor performance curve, showing the head and compressor efficiency as a function of flow. For a given diameter and pipe length, the system pressure drop is a function of the square root of density, pressure and velocity. Therefore, a given system resistance curve will change with gas composition, pressure temperature and velocity. So, if for instance the density of the gas increases, or in other words the molecular weight of the gas increases, then the system resistance will increase, as depicted in this example. Now, an important thing to note here is that since the operating point is defined as the intersection of the compressor head curve and the system resistance curve as depicted here, then any increase in the gas density or molecular weight will cause the operating point to move to the left side of the head capacity curve closer and closer to the surge point. The effect of gas density changes on actual mass and standard flow rates are as follows. First, the actual volume flow rate will vary as a result of the operating point change, which is the intersection of the compressor curve and the system resistance curve, as seen in the previous video. The mass flow rate will be the product of the new actual volume flow rate and the gas density at the new gas conditions. And finally, the standard volume flow rate will be the product of the new actual volume flow rate at its pressure temperature corrected for standard conditions. Note here that the gas density changes will change the operating point of each compressor stage in a multi-stage compressor. Depending on the impeller selection, this change could have an adverse effect on the operation of a dynamic compressor, causing surge and corresponding high vibration, temperature and flow changes. As it can be seen from this equation, dynamic compressor required power increases directly with gas density up to the choke flow or stonewall region of the performance curve. In the choke flow region, the head produced by the compressor approach zero, since the gas velocity is equal to its sonic velocity. Now, to finish off this section, I would like to remind you the following example. 
it shows the effect on compressor section performance, resulting from a change in the gas molecular weight. So, in the case of a higher molecular weight, the head capacity curve or the section performance curve of this compressor will look like this. And in the case of a lower molecular weight, it would look like this. Recall here, as previously discussed, that molecular weight changes can result in compressor stage mismatching, which can cause significant mechanical damage to the compressor train.